So this is video three for chapter 13. It goes with section 13.3, and we're gonna be looking at proportional relationships, which we did cover in our seventh grade book, um, chapter five, section six. So some of this might sound familiar. All right, so uh, the targets, we can write equations and graph the lines for proportional relationships. And proportional relationships are also known as direct variation. Direct variation. So when you see direct variation, know that we're talking about proportional relationships. So we can also interpret the meaning of the slope of those relationships, which we also know is also the rate. Same thing as the rate. So we're going to be talking about and you answering questions about the slope or the rate. Okay. So proportional, the same as direct variation. What does that mean? Well, if you remember, we talked about it in chapter five. It starts at zero and has a constant rate. So that rate could be going up, constant rate going up five, up five, up five, or it could be a constant rate going down, down three, down three, down three, okay? So let's look at what it looks like and how we determine if something is proportional, looking at a table, a graph, and the equation. So looking at a table, well, it would have to have the point zero, zero. Now notice this table doesn't have it, but if I follow the pattern, I would get the point zero, zero, okay? So we also need to check for a constant rate. Well, I'm looking at how much the X and the Y both go up every time. So this goes, up three, up one, up three, up one, up three, up one. So it, that tells me it has a constant rate, okay? And if I follow the pattern, like I said, back, I would end up at zero, zero. So it fits both of these criteria. So let's find the rate here. Well, if you remember, we said the rate is always y over x. So I could take any of these y values divided by any of the x, you know, the x value that goes with it, and I get the rate of one-third. Okay, so graph. Well, does it start at zero on the graph? That means it has to go through the point zero, zero, the origin, zero, zero, and then a constant rate is shown by being a straight line. So as long as it's a straight line that goes through zero, zero, it is uh, proportional. And then our equations are just going to be y equals some constant number, is our rate times the x. So if your equation looks like y equals 2x, y equals negative 5x, just some number times x, then it's going to be proportional. Okay, I did want to go back to our graph here. We found the rate in the table. Let's find the rate in the graph. Well, it's still going to be y over x, so I'm going to look at my coordinates, and it looks like I'm at 7 and 28. So when I put the y value over the x value, I get a rate or a slope of four, okay? So um, I can find the rates in both of these, and obviously the rate is just the number in your equation, okay? So if they ever ask you to write the equation, you got to identify the slope or the rate, and then you can put it into your equation. So this would just be y equals one-third x y equals 4x. Whatever the rate is, just gets multiplied by the x. And notice I keep using rate and slope interchangeably. Okay, on to our example here, graphing a proportional relationship if I have the equation. Well, we got to pull the rate out of the equation, right? Whatever that rate is that's multiplied by the x, like we have up here, pull it out, figure out what it is. And we know it has to go through the point 0, 0, and it's also going to go through the point 1 and whatever the rate is. We talked about that a lot in Chapter 5. Okay, and then connect the dots so that you have a line. Okay, so we're going to graph three equations here. They're all going to go through 0, 0, right? So here's the first one, 1 half x. Well, the rate is 1 half. So that means I move over 1 and go to 1 half. Now, I can keep doing that. I can keep going over one, up a half, over one, up a half, over one, up a half. 
and then I'll see my pattern of my straight line and connect the dots. So maybe putting a couple more dots on there will help you get it straight. Okay, there's the first one. So I'm going to label that y equals 1 half x. Next one, y equals 4x. Okay, so I still know it goes through 0, 0. Then this is telling me I go over 1, up 4. And I kind of run out of room before I can do it again. So I can also go down 1, oops, sorry, <laughs> back 1, and down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that should also be on the same line, just to give me a little bit more... So when I connect them, I know I'm making my line straight. That got messed up a little bit. There. Okay. And then the last one, y equals negative 3x. So again, goes through 0, over 1, and down 3 this time, negative 3. Okay. I run out of room to keep going this way, so I can always work backwards and go up, oh, sorry, back 1, up 3. There we go. All right, and then I can connect those, and I'll have that graph as well. All right, so you notice these are all straight lines, and they all go through 0, 0. y equals negative 3x with a negative slope there, and y equals 4x was up here. Okay? All right. Okay, let's go on to our example where we're using, um, writing and using a direct variation equation. So... We're going to read the problem and use the information that they give us to find the rate or to find the slope. And then we can use that to write our equation. And then once we have our equation, we can use that to answer our questions. Okay? So this question says the weight y of an object on Titan, which is one of Saturn's moons, is proportional to the weight x on Earth. So here's our problem. If, a pro if an object weighs 105 pounds on Earth, it would weigh 15 pounds on Titan. Write the equation for the relationship. Well, I need to use these values that are given to get the rate or to get the slope, okay? Key here is we know rate or slope is y over x. So I'm gonna look again, y is the weight on Titan. So in the problem, they told me that was 15 pounds. And x is the weight on the Earth, which they tell me is 105 pounds. So if I simplify that, divide by 5, I actually get uh, 3 over 21, and I can keep going, I get 1 seventh as my rate. So if I know the rate or the slope, my equation would just be y equals 1 seventh x. Cool. So interpret the slope. This means, tell me what the slope means. What is it actually telling us about Titan and Earth? Well, the slope means that an object on Titan weighs one-seventh as much as on Earth, right? Or you can look at your equation. If I take the weight of what something weighs on Earth, I would multiply it by one-seventh to figure out what it weighs on Titan. Okay, so how much would a chunk of ice that weighs 40 pounds on Earth weigh on Titan? Well, now we know we're supposed to use our equation to solve here. So I'm going to write my equation down again. Y equals 1 seventh times X. And what they're giving me here, I have to determine if it's X or Y. So if it's Earth, I look back up to the question and Earth is X. Okay, so I'm going to put 40 in for x. So what is 1 7th times 40? And if I type that into my calculator, 40 divided by 7, 5.7 pounds. So the weight on Titan would be 5.7 pounds. Okay? Okay, so I flipped my paper over, and I'm going to go over this question. It says the daily wage, y, in dollars of a factory, factory worker, is proportional to the number of parts that they make, X, assembled in that day, okay? So the worker, assem uh, <laughs> a worker assembles, it should just say a worker assembles, um, 200, nope, 150 parts, and earns $200 a day, 
Okay, so that's the information that they give me. I have to use that to find the rate so that I can write the equation. Tell me what the slope means and then use your equation, right, to figure out how much money would they make if they do 100 parts in a day, okay? So look back at the example we just did. You're gonna use these numbers to find the rate, plug it into the equation, tell me what the rate or the slope means, and then use your equation to answer this, okay? So pause here and do that. Okay, I took my values here and I know y is money and x is parts. So $200 divided by 150 parts comes out to this. 1.33 repeating, right? And if I had to label that, it would be dollars per part. So that's what the slope means, right? That person gets paid $1.33 per part that they make, okay? And if I know the rate, you can plug it right into the equation, y equals 1.3x. So then I wrote that equation down here, and if I want to know how much they make for 100 parts, well, 100 parts is x. So if I do 1.3 repeating times 100 parts, I get $133.33. Okay? All right. The last part of this section is just comparing proportional relationships. So thinking about who is faster. Okay, so for example, if I'm looking at two equations, I'm simply going to look at the rate here and the rate here, and whichever one has a larger rate is going faster, right? It's going to be a steeper line going faster. So in this case, 12 is faster than 4, okay? Here I have a graph and an equation. So in this case, I need to figure out the rate of this graph, right? So I notice it goes through 0, 0. And I have a point I can use here. If I do 12 over, or sorry, 12 over 6, but if I do y over x, 12 over 6, that gives me 2. So now I'm comparing, well, this has a rate of 2, this has a rate of 2.5. 2.5 is faster. A bigger rate or a bigger slope is what we consider to be faster. Okay? All right. You have two more here. Try these. So you need to figure out what is the rate or the slope on this graph and then decide which one's faster and what is the rate or the slope in the table so that you can decide which one is faster. Okay? So pause here, work those both out, and then we'll check them together in a minute. Okay, well, looking at the point here, if I do y over x, I get a rate or slope of 10, and that is faster than 9. So the graph here is faster than this equation. And looking at the rate or the slope here, looks like if I want to find the change in y and the change in x, and then y over x, I get one-third. So careful, this is one-third compared to 3. This is faster. Got to make sure you're doing y over x. If you go too quickly, you might think that they're the same. But y over x to get your slope. Okay? All right. We are going to stop here. Okay? There are some practice problems on the bottom of this page, but they're not part of the video, and you don't have to do them yet. We'll get to those in class.